In the second part of Genesis 2.21, God goes into very careful detail telling us how he formed the woman. First, he caused a sleep upon Adam, and then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. You know, the word ribs in verse 21 and rib, singular in verse 22, it's an interesting word. It's a word that is only translated as ribs here in these verses. Every other place it's translated as side or side chamber. Also beam, board, plank. Here, though, it's translated as ribs. We don't have a difficulty in understanding what that rib represents because the rib turns into the woman. God takes the rib of man, Adam, and he makes the woman. So the rib becomes the woman through the wonderful, miraculous process of God's creation. And so we understand the rib represents the body of believers, the whole company of the elect. But let's read the second part again. There's something strange here that doesn't seem to make sense when we read it. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Now, when I read that, I thought that seems odd. It doesn't sound right, does it? He took one of his ribs, there's nothing wrong with that, and closed up the flesh, and there's nothing wrong with that instead thereof. And that's the problem. That sounds awkward. That sounds just out of place. What does that mean? Instead of what? He closed up the flesh instead thereof. You know, Mr. Camping used to have a good little saying concerning awkward statements in the Bible that when you come across them, it's sort of like a signpost that's really hailing the reader to check it out closer. Take a more thorough look into the language. Now, in the J. Green's Interlinear Bible, they also recognize that this language is awkward. It just doesn't sound good in an English sentence. And so they try to correct it. And in the Interlinear, the literal translation says... And Jehovah God caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh underneath, underneath. Now, the word translated instead is a word that has been translated other places as from under, from under. So that's not actually that bad a translation. And they had some justification for translating it underneath, because where is a man's ribs? Well, it's down below the arm, it's underneath, or an area from under, and that makes a better sentence, doesn't it? He took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh underneath. We read that and we're fine with it. But the only problem is that in smoothing out the sentence, we would lose the gospel meaning that God is trying to illustrate. And, you know, this is a good verse for us to really see that, that these modern Bible versions, and I'm not faulting Jay Green, he was trying to give a literal translation, and he didn't, of course, go and do what many modern Bible English translations do. But this is just an example of the problem that occurs when people try to smooth over the language of the Bible. And the King James Bible is the best English translation because it preserves many of the awkward statements It preserves the Old English and the manner in which God's original word spoke in many cases. And a lot of times it doesn't sound quite right to our ears, but there's a reason for it because God wrote it that way. And so the NIV and the NAS and these other versions, they try to assist the reader of the English language And they fix it up. They'll use modern language. And they'll just straighten out that verse so it's much easier to read. And we could read those Bibles. It's a lot easier on the modern ear. And you read. But in doing that, they lose a lot of meaning. 
And that's the case here if we were to translate instead as underneath. No, God very purposefully used the word instead. And instead is 8478 in Strong's Concordance in the Hebrew. And this is a word that often points to substitution. And that's how we understand that word in English. Instead. Instead. For instance, after Cain slew Abel, it says in Genesis 4, verse 25, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So now I have a seed. It's not Abel, but it's Seth instead of Abel. 